please know that salt is not actually a starter. Salt inhibits the bad bacteria. It's the bacteria that is already innate in the water and in the food that is going to cause the fermentation to begin. Salt is simply there to prevent any bad bacteria to proliferate or to inhabit your ferment. So this is the zucchini. Supposedly it's a zucchini. It actually feels on the outside like a butternut squash. It's, I am going to use this to collect seeds. I just have to find the right knife of all the knives I have. Lots and lots of knives, but I just never know which one is going to be the right, right one. Yeah, this is, this is not zucchini. This, I was right, this is butternut squash. Yum. So not only do I get to save seeds from this, which will all be contained in this portion of the plant. I have all this wonderful butternut squash. So of course, I think I will probably ferment it. Oh, wow. I need a chainsaw. <laughs> I'm not very strong. I used to be, but not anymore. The better my shoulders and arms get, the better it'll be for me to start resistance training again so I can build up that strength. But as it is right now, it's pretty pathetic. <sighs> On the subject of knives and strength, my father was a professional race car driver and a professional snowmobile racer. He won first prize a lot. And something that I learned very young in life is that it's not the tool, it's your skill with the tool. So, you know, a Honda is not better than a Toyota, and it's not better than a Lamborghini. It's the skill of the driver that determines the use of the tool. Similarly, you can work with the roughest tools. So long as you have skill, you can create masterpieces with that. And your greatest skill is actually your confidence. It's your ability to believe that you have power over something and that in confidence is persistence and tenacity and endurance and a willingness to persevere and to keep trying different ways to create something. So this is a great knife, but because I don't have physical strengths, which is also a skill. This knife actually works better for me because this is shorter, this is longer. So unless I'm able to put my force of energy throughout the length of this, and even though I am able to put greater force and strength throughout the length of this, just by virtue of this being shorter, I have more force that I can put into the shortness of this blade. So I have in past received a lot of criticism, for God's sake, go buy a sharper knife. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. Folks, it's not the knife. It's my strength, which is part of my skill, and it's my confidence to be able to use this, even if I have fear of a knife. So it's about overcoming your fear. That's part of confidence. It's about overcoming the fact, my fear that this might be dull or that this might be inadequate because it's not really this, it's me. It's about my adequacies, my physical strength adequacies and it's about my ability and willingness to overcome any fears that I might have about anything that I might be lacking in any way, including my belief that I can have mastery over this knife. So, you know, I have a different point of view than a lot of people. I know that. I know a lot of people don't like that. That's why I would always tell you, use whatever you have on hand. It's not the knife that makes the cook. It's not the clothes that makes the man or the woman. 
It's your confidence in you and your mastery over this knife or whatever tool you have. I can't believe that for you and neither can anyone else. That's an inside job. So whether it's cutting food or gardening or creating a business or making a work of art, just remember it's you and your confidence is what's going to set you apart, is what's going to help you succeed, is what's going to help you cut into food, etc. I think the reason why many people think that it's the tool or it's the clothing, why they're not able to believe that it's themselves, it's because people don't believe in something greater. And I don't care if you want to call that God, higher power, or just simply a potential, the highest potential of who or what you be. I'm not interested in putting a label on it. That said, one of the most inspiring stories that I ever read was the story of Moses. It wasn't elo eloquent a speech, quote unquote, that's what Moses himself said. Something believed in the highest potential of Moses and said, get out of my way and let me work through you. So, you know, even if that's just fear that's holding you back, the highest potential of what you are is confidence, is courage. So if you get out of the way, if you get fear out of the way, and everything that you be and do to create and subscribe to fear, then you're opening a doorway for the greatest potential of you to walk through. And you thought we were just going to save seeds today and maybe cook a little squash. Life is more than just cooking and saving seeds. So I still have a bit to do before I get to the seeds. I've chopped quite a bit of the butternut squash there. And I have a full pot. This is a steam basket in water. And I'm steaming this squash, the butternut squash, and I want to ferment that because I'm going to add that to soups and stews. I might even do a cream of fermented butternut squash soup. Doesn't that sound yummy? I suppose if I had freezer space I would freeze some of this, but I don't. So I'm just going to ferment it knowing that it will last say anywhere from three to nine months on the counter or at room temperature. That should be enough time to eat all this. Since the hour went back, my sleeping and eating, probably like all of you, is a little bit off. It's only 11.30 and I'm already hungry, so I'm going to have some of this. So satisfying, butternut squash or any of the squashes really. Just a little bit of butter and some salt. Probably because it's so rich in fiber and water content. I think what I'm going to do with this batch, I have a whole other batch to make. I'm actually going to make some butternut squash soup for Dom and then and then the rest I will ferment in this jar, in this one gallon jar. It's not coincidental that I went out and bought a bunch of different squash and butternut squash was the only squash I did not buy and I couldn't understand why my body was telling me not to buy it. Now I understand because I was told that this is a zucchini because my in-laws are directly from Italy. They moved here when they were 15. She was, my mother-in-law was 15, my father-in-law was 17 and they didn't speak English very well. It's taken like a lot of foreigners that migrate to other non-native countries. It takes a while to learn the language and sometimes you don't have the right words for the right thing. It's okay. I have so many people that I've met here in the city of Toronto, uh, which is a major melting pot of different languages and cultures. Uh, people will say to me, oh, I don't speak very good English. And I'm like, no, you speak perfectly enough for me to understand you. I don't need you to speak perfect. I just need to be able to understand you. So the onus of understanding is on me. It's not on them. And if I need them to speak perfectly, well, I'm probably not going to understand too much, am I? Because I steamed this and I didn't boil it directly in the water, I've retained the bulk of the vitamins and minerals in the squash as I possibly could. And part of the reason why I like to ferment 
squash after it's been steamed is because fermentation actually creates even more vitamins and minerals. Sometimes it will enhance the vitamins and minerals that are already inherent to the food and sometimes it creates vitamins such as B12 that aren't even inherently natural to the foods. For me personally, I love the whole aspect that there's this intelligent life form called bacteria that has the ability to create and just as equal ability to destroy. I don't know, it's just to me it's incredibly fascinating. People don't think bacteria are intelligent life forms, but I have a very different point of view on that. It's interesting how since about mid-August of 2021, I find myself craving uh, root vegetables such as potatoes, sweet potatoes, and these types of gourds with the harder casing, so not the summer squash, the winter squash. And that's because there's a grounding effect in these foods. I'm not going to talk too much about that in this particular video. Suffice to say, if you're feeling fearful with what's happening in the world today, then your diet probably needs to be a little richer in root vegetables and in winter squashes. Even though I have various fermented vegetable brines that I could use as a starter for these, or I could immerse it completely in uh, any particular starter, be that water kefir, milk kefir whey, rejuvelac, kombucha, kraut juice, fermented carrot juice, etc. I am going to simply use a salt water brine. I currently have potato water as well as pasta water fermenting. When you boil things like potatoes or pasta, and even when I steam them, I reserve all that water and I ferment it because that's where the bulk of the vitamins and minerals are. Typically what I do with that brine is I will add it to a bone broth of my choosing to make a particular soup or stew. And so I'm going to use the brine as well as this butternut squash to create a base liquid for my fermented soups and stews. I've gone ahead, I'll still have to fill this with more of the butternut squash as it's cooking. I've already added the salt. So for a one gallon jar, I add approximately two to three tablespoons. I have a jar of fermented pasta, red scarlet runner beans, just the actual bean, not the casing, uh, carrots, glow bar to choke, celery, and I think some garlic, onion. As you can see, I don't put a cabbage leaf over it. This is 100% brine, vegetable brine that I have submerged this into. I will add some of this, a few, I'm gonna to have to get a bigger jar, I think. And actually, I don't even need to. It's perfectly fine. And then I'll let that ferment for a couple days and then that pasta salad will be ready to eat. So essentially, you just wanna make sure it's covered with water and put your lid on it. You don't need a weight to weigh this down because it's fairly heavy, it sinks. Yeah, there's some stuff that, little fibers that might float, but don't worry about that and then just let it ferment. Now, you don't have to cube these. You can spiralize them, you can puree it, you can even put it in bigger chunks to ferment this. So it's really about whatever consistency you desire. I like cubes because from that, I can just drop it in and eat it as a cube in a stew or a soup. I can puree it and make a cream of butternut squash soup. Easier to do that when you have a chunk than it is to use that from the puree. Now I do have some left and I have more liquid than what I started with for the simple fact that when you st steam butternut squash it already has a lot of moisture it goes into the pot and so I'm going to use this liquid to puree this butternut squash and I'm going to make a cream of butternut squash soup. So I can already tell I have way more liquid in this pot than I need for this soup. So I'm going to ferment the last remaining bit of this liquid in this pot because I want to add 
whipping cream for this to make it a real cream of soup. I'm going to add some whipping cream, about a quarter cup to a half a cup is all I need. And I want some spice in this, so I think I'm going to put some pumpkin pie spice in this. I think it'll make a really nice soup. About a quarter of a teaspoon. That's a beautiful texture. I'm just going to try that and see what it tastes like. Oh my goodness, that pumpkin pie spice was exactly what needed to be in this. So now a little bit of Redmond's Real Salt and just a pinch of black pepper or white pepper or red pepper, whatever you have. If you like a thinner soup, add more of the reserved water. So I'm just going to pour myself a little. Nice, thick, rich consistency. Mmm, that is so good. This would be good with a little bit of butter too, so I'm going to add some butter. I'm going to add a couple pats of butter, maybe three. I want a little bit of fat in that. Now I suspect that a little bit of maple syrup might be nice in this as well, just to add a hint of sweetness. But if you're trying to avoid sugar, a content of any kind, then you definitely don't want to add maple syrup. And additionally, if you're trying to avoid sugar at all cost, and hence carbs, right, you might want to ferment this before adding the cream and before adding the butter. It's texture. I've asked Dom to try this butternut squash, cream of butternut squash soup. Uh, so just share whatever you want, what it tastes like, texture, whatever you think is you'd like to share. It's nice and warm. Mm. It's not too strong. It doesn't have a kick to it. I'm almost wondering if it's missing something, mm. but I'm not really mm. familiar with this particular kind of. Mm -hmm. it's nice. Normally, I would add uh, either potatoes and a little bit of ginger to that. So and what I did. Ginger. Okay, just a hint because too much ginger is not good for you. But it's good. So is it a bit bland? Can you taste the cinnamon? It is. Maybe a little bit more cinnamon. That may oh, okay, maybe ginger, that's what but, it is. Yeah. Okay. So just a hint more of the pumpkin pie spice that I used. Mm, so good. Yeah. Mm. Good, okay. Thanks, mm. hon. But, hold on before you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can I do the official thing? Oh, yeah, Scarpetta. <laughs> there you go. That's my way of saying it. Yeah, Thanks, compliments to the chef. Thanks, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't ginger. Yes, it was cinnamon. More cinnamon. Ooh. More pumpkin pie spice. So if you're like Dom and you're wanting more of a kick, then and also more warmth then add a little more of the pumpkin pie spice the nice thing about pumpkin pie spice is it contains cinnamon and cinnamon helps to regulate blood sugar levels so even though this has sugar in it when you add the pumpkin pie spice which contains cinnamon it slows your insulin response to the sugar that's in this so that's another option if you're not even if you are going to ferment it but definitely if you're not going to ferment it uh, because it has more sugar. So I went ahead and added an extra quarter teaspoon, so full half teaspoon for this, about five cups. I also added a tablespoon of maple syrup. And now, to end this video, I have to go pick up my daughter from her internship, and I know she's gonna be hungry. So I'm going to take her a little care package, which I'm sure she'll appreciate.
I dug out all the seeds and now I'm just simply rinsing them off really well. I've transferred my washed seeds to this container of water. Do you see these little white ones? They're too thin. They're not viable. So I'm just going to pick those out. And what do I mean by viable? There's not enough life force energy in this for it to grow. Now I'll strain these and dry them. So the final act of drying my seeds is I have this parchment paper and I've scattered the seeds and I have the fan on above to allow a little bit of air to come down onto the seeds and help dry them out. And I'll just leave them to dry out and then once they're dry, all these little bits I will remove, discard, and then I will freeze the seed in a Ziploc bag. Thanks for hanging out with me in the kitchen today. I hope you learned something new or at the very least you were somewhat entertained. <laughs> Until I see you in a future video, thanks for watching. Ciao for now.